Hi, welcome to UTA's Department of Electrical Engineering solder training program. In the second video, we will cover two different soldering methods. The first method that we'll try is using solder wick. The second method will be using the solder pump or solder sucker. If you watch the first video, you should have a perf board with five resistors. This is what we're going to use to practice our desoldering methods with. If you're following along with our video series, secure the PCB with a vise or tape the edges to your work surface. UTA electrical engineering students can secure the PCB in the UTA custom fixture. Ensure the soldering iron tip size is about the size of the pad you plan to desolder. Turn the soldering iron on to 600 degrees Fahrenheit for leaded solder and 700 for lead-free solder. Dampen the sponge with distilled water. We'll use solder wick to desolder one side of the resistors. Solder wick is just braided copper wire, usually with flux added. The wick will absorb the solder from the joint provided the wick is not loaded with solder already. If the wick has solder in it, you'll need to trim it off with wire cutters. Use the helping hands magnifying glass to see better. Place the end of the wick over the solder joint. It's okay to be only on one side of the component lead. Hold the solder wick by the plastic case so you don't burn your fingers. Clean the soldering iron tip on the sponge and place the side of the soldering iron tip on top of the wick. This allows a large area of the wick to heat and absorb the solder quickly. It may take quite a few seconds to heat the solder wick. Be patient. You will feel the soldering iron push the wick into the solder as it melts. When the solder starts to melt into the wick, leave it for three more seconds and pull both the soldering iron and wick away at the same time. If you don't, you might solder the wick to the joint. Tin the tip and return the iron to its stand. Trim the used part of the wick off so you can start with a clean end next time. We'll use a solder pump or solder sucker to desolder the other side of the resistors. This method works well for through hole components. First, we'll need to see if the pump is clean. Push the plunger in as far as it will go and see if any solder comes out of the tip. Engage the pump and place it on one side of the solder joint. Place your thumb or finger on the trigger. Heat the joint with the soldering iron, and when the solder melts, press the trigger. Tin the soldering iron tip and return the iron to its stand. Completely depress the plunger to eject the solder from the pump. There is usually a tiny bit of solder left holding the component lead to the pad. Use the ESD tweezers to wiggle the component lead back and forth until the lead breaks free. If it doesn't come free after a few wiggles, you'll need to desolder the solder joint again. If you have to desolder a joint again, it really helps to re-solder the joint first. Remember, the easiest way to desolder is to put the right part in the right orientation in to begin with. Join us for our third video where we will build a solder practice board, the SPB-2 from Electronics Express. UTA Electronics Engineering majors sign up on the UTA Electrical Engineering Lab website to receive your kit for free.